we go. I get up, I get down, and I'm jumping around. And the rump is in rough, get so comfortable now. Let's fly. Touchdown! Unbelievable! Incredible! I think we both know there's more to it than that. This is going to be a good thing for everybody. Hello, Master Chief. The NFL playoffs are here. Typically, betting on games can be hard, but our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook are making it easy for you all. That's right, Jack. DraftKings is taking care of all of its new customers for the postseason. Sign up today and you'll get 56 to 1 odds on any playoff team to win their game. Place a $5 bet on the team to win their game, and if your pick is correct, you'll win 280 in free bets. The playoffs are winding down, so make sure you take advantage of this offer while you can. It's easy. Just bet $5 and you'll win $280 in free bets if your pick hits. Sportsbook isn't the only place that DraftKings is showing love. Everyone can play for huge cash with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contest. All new customers have a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code SMOKE and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 to win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to All the Smoke, coming to you live from LA 2022 edition. Jack, my brother. I see you shining with the new merch. Yeah, Talk yeah. All the Smoke dot store. If you want to look good, go get you some. It's out there waiting for you, baby. Man, special guest today. Someone we really looked up to growing up. Uh, the original really, big homie. The, the real original enforcer in the NBA. Book out now. Yes. The last enforcer. Welcome to the show, Charles Oakley. Thanks, baby. Man, we Thanks, appreciate Jack. your time, you know man. You know what it is. Yes, sir. Let's get, get to it, Jack. It. Well, let's talk about the book. The, the title's self explanatory. Book, hey, yeah, the books sell, the title sell a lot. The books sell a lot more. It's right. a lot of stories, just stuff from growing up. Um, it's just some stuff that people, you know, can really relate to, like growing up stories. Then people who watched the ball in the 80s and 90s, people who been a fan of mine, my consistency over my career, what I stand for, what I do, all this in this book and a lot more. Mm. Does this book talk about your time in Chicago? Talk about Chicago, um, yeah. I played with Mike for four years, and some of the stuff Mike talked about in The Last Dance, some mm -hmm. similar stuff, but not a lot of that in the book, but we had the same era where a lot of stuff was when the league was really bad, when yeah. a lot of guys were disappearing before games, before shoot around. But, you know, I go and talk about a lot of other stuff in the book too, yeah. Yes, indeed. You said, I can't remember every rebound I grabbed, but I do have a story, a true story. Or just about every punch is slapping in your resume. You can remember all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think for me and Matt, like, we look at that, all that stuff different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because at times, you know, our passion will force us to be that person sometimes. So we understood. With, with the book coming out, what do you expect people to get from it? And do you expect them to see a different side of you? Um, it definitely always some they don't know about you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of that in the book. But I'm talking about basketball in a way that a lot of people say they wish the basketball we played today. Mm -hmm. Hold guys accountable. Um, know what you do on the court, um, you know, game situation. And, and I think that in the game today, you watch basketball, it's just everybody like, ah, ah, ah. And that's why you see so much bad talent on the floor. And it may be a reason why the Lakers is struggling mm -hmm. because it seems like to me they don't, nobody know their identity but LeBron. And uh, that's the head coach, you know, for, that's what you for tell a guy, first thing, training camp. Yep. You, know, you do this, you do this. That's why it's a role, right. time of possession. Guys play 30 minutes together. See. Efficiency. But it's a lot of sloppy basketball now. And I agree with you. The coach should <laughs> live that in the bud from the jump. With this book, a lot of people don't know during the George Floyd situation, you came down and supported me. Yes. I'm talking about majorly supported me. Uh, you fed, you cooked for us every day. And uh, you talk about a lot of this stuff in the book yes. with you being there. 
talk about it a little bit, let the people know, you know, that you was with me the whole experience and the time we had down there. The experience of what happened to George Floyd happened to me when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I got stories in the book like I was coming home from school. Most of the time I had to catch two buses. And one time I was, caught, you know, I was catching two buses, it was getting dark, and one bus was coming late. So I tried to walk home, you know, instead of waiting in the bus stop. And I was walking home. Police grabbed me, slammed me, talking about what the drugs said. I had a backpack, like what the drugs, threw me in the car and rolled me around for five hours. Mm -hmm. Then nobody knew. I was 16, nobody knew where I was at. But when the George Floyd thing happened, and the way it happened, it just, it's just, it shocked, you know, shocked so many people, and everybody tried to come together, because, you know, seeing that happen, the guy got his knee on this guy, mm -hmm. he told him, I can't breathe, and you still stand on top of him. I mean, it's, they made everybody want to be family, bring, you know, let's stop this madness, because mm -hmm. seeing that, and this guy just act like, you know, want to smoke a cigarette, and you want to pay him one day. <laughs> he like, I got all day to do this, so it was embarrassing. But to come to his rescue, I mean, everybody came to his rescue. But when you call me, like, oh, I'm there, Big Brother Will. Um, it was just sad to see that. And um, what he threw, his family, you know, I got to be more of the family because, mm -hmm. you know, like family came around, that's when families should come together. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came together in a good way. And uh, being in Minnesota, being in Houston and coming to the rides, you know, and just seeing everybody just... We for George, we for George, mm -hmm. and that, that just puts some on my chest, man. Yeah. Like crazy. Speaking of that, obviously you were there with Jack for a lot of it, but talk to me about how proud you are about Jack because when it's all said and done, it's the biggest protest in the history of the world. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's shook the entire world, and 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 Jack was at the forefront, but you were right behind him. Well, to see him step up with number one was a blessing. And I, that's, that's what friends are for, you know. Everybody said, I got a best friend. Mm -hmm. Best friend, Jack was best friend. I mean, every, everything, uncle, dad, mm -hmm. because he took the responsibility with his kids, his girlfriend, and he kept the family at a whole. And what I see, just, I mean, just seeing kept moving the press. Everybody was trying to question Jack, but Jack didn't, didn't, didn't let none of that disturb what he was trying to do. He right. was trying to bring a family close together because they lost a close one. Mm -hmm. And I, I take my hat off to Jack, you know. Like I say, he was my, you know, I coached him in the big three. Uh, you know, we didn't win the chip. He come back and win the chip. But uh, this, this man did so much for so many different people because when you bring someone together, people watching. Some right. people will be negative, some positive, but he brought it in a good way. And, the, you know, what he doing now, the shows, uh, just still pushing the needle for us, trying to bring people together. Yep. And some people do stuff, they'll stop. They yep. do it for the press. He didn't yep. do it for the press. Right. He did it from the heart. That was right. his brother. It's real. Born and raised Cleveland. Talk yep. to us about your Cleveland. upbringing. Cleveland. Cleveland. It was. It was. It was. You know. It was a little rugged. Um, you know. It's still grinding. Family. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Family. <laughs> family. Uh, it's six of us. Uh, but no. You know, my family had a decent name in Cleveland. But it, like I say, it was. It was the streets was hot then. You know, it, drugs all time high. Mm -hmm. Everybody getting money. Um, you know, but. It wasn't crazy like it is now, you know, but everybody was getting money and, you know, they got along. But now the people getting money, they don't get along. So yeah. the air was strong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I say, it was family, a lot of cousins and stuff. Uh, I, you know, I was you know, a kid growing up like every other kid in the playground, seeing a lot of things happen, you know, crap games getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the playground one day, just shoot, and I see this guy rob the crap game. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm 13. Like six hours on Friday, get their checks, come in, you know, post up, drink a 40 or something. This guy robbed the crap game with a switch. <laughs> I was like, this game. Like so, people? So, literally? So I, um, I leave there, go back, I tell my brother, he said, they ain't do nothing to you. He's like, forget it. But no, it was just funny. It was stuff like that happened. A lot of, it was a lot of guys getting stuck up, but they, you know, they they know that certain guys stick you up, just give it to them. Yeah. They yeah. don't want to, you know, no smoke. They don't go there. <laughs> they don't want that smoke. <laughs> um, when did uh, sports come into your life, in particular basketball? Um, I think I played football first. And um, what I played position? Pee -wee. I was playing peewee ball, so they put you, I was playing defense. But, you know, from that, growing up, I was um, playing football. I didn't play basketball until I really got to like junior high, mm -hmm. but I was playing in the park. Right. But I was playing organized football, mm -hmm. so I was better in football than basketball. Mm -hmm. Same with me. And um, so when I got in high school, I played both, and uh, I just kept you know going. But it was a good thing I did because I was you know there was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, it was just you know drugs and people just having fun. But uh, when I got to John Hay, and Son Harry was a football coach, and he said um, you know you can just, you can play both sports. So I played both of them and. Um, 
I think that uh, you know, by the time I get to be a senior, I was still good in both. Uh, you know, we win stuff in the Senate. We go on stakes. And down stakes, we having them big five stars and stuff. We mm -hmm. like three stars. But uh, it was fun, though. Got a chance to, you know, buy with a lot of other guys. And I think um, four guys from my high school team made the you know, NFL, you know, overall. Dope, Where do you attribute it. your, obviously, your physical toughness, but your mental toughness as well? I get that from my grandfather. He was a guy that, no nonsense, one of them guys that, you know, you get up 4 o'clock in the morning and... What he did before he went to work, he went to the field, come back, eat 24 mm -hmm. visits, walk two miles to work. Mm -hmm. He was, he did that for so many years. And, you know, just, he was the only guy, when he got a car, he was the guy in town. So he took everybody to town, took everybody to church. Three, he go to town three or four times, Saturday morning, Sunday school, four, you know. So I was watching him. So I was, a lot of, in a lot of his foot steps, I was just like, wow, this man, is, he's everything, you know. He up the road about four miles, three miles. He got a wagon. He go up there and feed the cows for the other guys who got the white fence. <laughs> and so he was says everything, and he was humble, and uh, he raised eight kids. And, you know, they was my aunts and uncles. And um, they was, he, said he was just great, 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 great. Mm. He was great. He was in so, Cleveland as well? No, it's Alabama. Alabama, okay, yeah, yeah South, yeah. Six eight power forward of Virginia Union yep. University, small division two, named the division two player of the year over your career. You culminated over twenty three hundred points, sixteen hundred rebounds. What was your college experience like? <clears throat> college Putting experience. Up numbers. It was. It was. Uh, you know, I just wanted to leave Cleveland because it was that I knew because all of my friends he was getting high, going to jail, jail still yeah. in clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they was they, you know they boosters. Booster, you know? yeah. So I asked some of my guys, I'm gonna talk about them. You know. They know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so they, these guys, they didn't like seven, eighth grade. They, you know, I think the girls, I mean, the stores were named like Hickbees and May Company. So they'll go in the store, stay all night bagging up stuff. They dress like the janitors. So when the janitor come to work the next morning, he thinks it's another guy, you know, working the job with him. So they have the same kind of uniform on, but they have about four or five bags, all the clothes in the store. So it was fun just, you know, these, <laughs> like cold, these guys. Hey, man, fresh, yeah. so, hey, fresh. So basically, when these guys get back on the street, they selling everything for a third, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, used to, you know, it was just, it was just crazy that to see that these guys were doing that. But it was fun. Um, it was a lot of fun growing up, and um, just, you know, I'm just glad, I, you know, I had a chance. Didn't get to know trouble, trouble like a lot right. of my guys did. A lot of them got in trouble, and they was like, "How do you escape?" I just, I just always trying to say, I was with them, but not when they were doing bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? I know that, yeah. Then one thing happened when I got in the league. I came home, and I rented a car from one of them. Mm -mm. So they went to the mall, and they ended up, they were stealing stuff. And uh, some kind of way, somebody got the license plate number, and, and they went, they called in, and they went to the rental place, it came back to me. So they came to me, hey, they was disrespecting me, so I, you know, I was like, hey, they called me. I wasn't there. They said, oh, man, we had a sting. We, you know, we got away. But no, you didn't get away. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. Yeah. So it was just a lot of stuff like that, um, a lot of fighting in the neighborhood. It was, it was, it was kind of rugged. When did you kind of start becoming like that enforcer mentality you grew up with, but a lot of fights as a youngster? Youngster in college. In college, this guy, he would play football. And they they called him Baby Bull. And um, he was always picking with me, take my hat off, put his finger in my ear. You know, one day we was going to lunch, Henderson Center, that's what they call it, school. And we had, go to Henderson Center, then you go lunch upstairs. So one day, I just had enough. He was, he was <laughs> a big guy. I just picked him up and just slammed his ass. Mm. <laughs> stepped on baby his ass. Bull. That's a motherfucker. Keep fucking with me. See what's going to happen. <laughs> every time I see you, I'm going to do this shit. God, <laughs> baby yeah. bull. So right. the words about campus, every time he saw me, he went the other way. Mm. <laughs> like mm. that movie in, uh, Bronx take, in the Bronx Tale. Yeah, yeah. I'll take <laughs> oh, his one. See you. <laughs> he go the other way. Bullies get bullied. I'll take his one. Yeah. How were your pre-draft workouts? Jerry Krause was eager to draft you. How, um, how was your pre-draft -work, pre workouts? Pre -great. It was, uh, the workout was easy because I think it, I was always in shape. I wasn't athletic as some guys, but as far as that, you know, I passed all the tests. And then I played in the East-West All-Star game, a, um, a Hawaii Classic. So my skill level, I was playing against, like, all the Division One guys, the top 10, 15 guys. But my thing was I was fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. So I knew how to rebound, block out, pass, you know, whatever. So all my skill levels was, was okay for me. It helped me against them because them guys were, you know, jumper jumpers. Yeah, I was athletes. But uh, playing a lot of them all-star games, 
Dean Smith was the coach one time. So Dean Smith told guys, we're going to pass the ball twice and shoot. And, you know, so we had one practice. You know, everybody just come together. You know, everybody didn't play ball, shouldn't understand something. But they didn't. So mm -hmm. we get in the game, guy was passing once and shoot. So every time you pass one, he would just, burn, burn. I'm like, they didn't get it. He said, pass twice, then shoot. They would pass one time the next day I was shooting. Mm -hmm. So it was just fun just to see how other guys on other levels that, that overlook what the coach say. 85, for get drafted in the first round. You technically went, went to the Cavs, but then got traded to uh, your rights to the Bulls. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Well, they had called. I didn't go to the draft number one because they said you probably go second or fourth round. And found out I went top 10, number nine. So, they, mm -hmm. so the Cleveland and Chicago had talked. I guess they didn't th think I was going to make it to 11. So they said we will trade picks. And once, Where were you during the draft? I was at my coach's house in Virginia. Okay. Yeah, so I stayed there and, you know, they called us on the phone and, you know, said there's going to be a swap. So I said, cool with me. I mean, shit, you said fourth round, I'm going top 10. I ain't, got, I ain't mm -hmm. arguing with nobody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me where to go. Right. But no, it was good. Uh, you know, once you get drafted, they call you the you go to that city. And, you know, Mike was there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but it was fun. You know, I went in there like I was like, it was still like, I'm still hungry. Yeah. You know, three power forward in front of me. So I had to work my way in the ladder. I was, you know, I was... They blow the whistle. I'm still going. Hey, I'm just showing you. I'm determined. I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Regardless. it was that. How was the transition into the Windy City? It, I was from Cleveland. So base was just, I mean, I was used to the cold. I'm used to people wearing mid coats and girls wearing high heel shoes. And yeah. The street, you know what I mean? It was more Chicago. I got more, you know, gains in Cleveland. But, you know, Cleveland probably caught up with them now. But right. I was cool. I mean, I had a big family in Chicago. So I was moving. I was moving around. I just go on the west side, get my hair cut. South side, I mean, this, Mr. Price used to cut my hair for like 30 years. He just passed. Already, you know, rest in peace. But uh, it was right on the heart of the Chicago West Side. Mm -hmm. And I met a lot of guys. So in the summertime, you know, they have summer league, play in the summer league, get to know the guys in the city. And, you know, I picked up some decent friends over the time and guys that, you know, in the city who, you know, know, know where to go, where not to go. But uh, I ain't had no problem. I mean, you know, then once Mike, we roamed this, you know, go places. And later on, when Mike got the center, you know, when Tim Grover started playing ball, and then everybody started coming to watch us, you know, play in the summertime. It just, it got to be a family thing. Who were your vets? I know you was on, I know George Gervin was there. Gervin came late. So basically it was, um, it was that time, uh, and when I came to the league, that gas was, you know, open like a door. It was in and out. Um, Mike was there. Uh, Dave Cuisine was there. Cindy Green. Atlanta Woolridge, Quinn Daly. We Orlando had guys. Woolridge. Yeah, Atlanta Woolridge, Juwan, Juwan O'Ham. Mm -hmm, so these right. guys was old, they was mm -hmm. old like a couple of years ago. So it really didn't say we had no bets, vets. The younger team. You know, then Gervin came when Jordan got hurt in my rookie year, but he was, you know, Ice Man, you know. I mean, Ice still hanging out. Ice, you know, yeah. Ice go to the house, sit on the porch. Ice was real cool. Just, you know, That's like he is now, laid back. Yeah. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? Like when you first get to the NBA, what was the moment where you're like, damn, I'm in the NBA, I'm, I'm here? Um, I forgot when they drafted me, but so other moments was when one day that we had a, a game up at Milwaukee, preseason game. So, you know, the vets, you know, rookies got to come early, you know. Yeah. I'm always early, but some, some of this day I was late. So I get there and um, I don't go in the first one, I'm on the second bus with the guy, you know, been there two or three years. Like, Rook, what you doing? I said, I missed the bus. Oh, you missed the bus. Okay. So we get to the arena, right? So <laughs> I go change right quick. So I'm going to get tape, you know, because you all to get tape back then. And I was getting tape in the vet. Like, no, no, no. You got to get up, Rook. I said, okay. Rook, what you mean? I thought, I'm, I'm a Rook, but I'm trying to get tape. So no, you can't get tape. So I take all the tape and throw it in the garbage. I say, ain't nobody, ain't no fucking okay. guy getting tape. <laughs> now, now, move me off this table. <laughs> <laughs> I said, move me off this table. Oh man, they started laughing. They started, <laughs> they started giving me power. You, you all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what yeah. was the NBA like in nineteen ninety five though? It was it was like you know everybody went for everybody's head. It wasn't no like you know shaking, picking nobody up, and oh uh, let's go eat out the one. No, it was going. That's one thing they did. They, everybody went out to one another. Mm -hmm. you, know, they, you couldn't hide. Yeah, because they going you know, like I said, mismatch. They going to you. You yeah. got to play. It was so, heavy, heavy drugs back then, though, right? Oh, too. Yeah. I remember David Stern's whole thing. He 
So yeah. It was too black and too too many drugs. Yeah, David Stern. Yeah, it was it was like in, in, he said in Oakland. That, no, he didn't say that. Oakland, that, was, that, that was a stigma yeah. on the league. Yeah, it was it was that there because that's when it was all time high though. It yeah. had to be yeah. out there. I mean, it wasn't just in um, Chicago, New York. You know, Detroit, yeah. Oakland. Oakland was bad. That Marriott. Oh, yes, Oakland was bad. It was like a flea market. That Marriott. <laughs> it was like, it was, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they they clean it up though. But, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they, like I said, some guys might make it to shoot around, but they ain't making it to the game. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> they went to see their second girlfriend mm, of that mm, thing. Out there skiing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out that white girl. <laughs> went to see their second girlfriend. Let me ask you this question about, about Iceman, because it's a story that I heard a lot. You ever heard a story about Iceman showing up to the game, like pulling up to the game immediately, like missing one and all, and getting 40 and leaving straight from the game to his car out the... Uh, did you hear that story? Uh... And and uh, it was Chicago. So I, yeah. I, I know in Chicago, well, in Chicago, he had thirty four at halftime, and he only scored maybe four a second. I, I don't yeah. know about the forty. I mean, it could have happened, you know, because a lot of shit happened back then. Was, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> a lot of shit happened. A lot of shit happened. Yeah, for real. It was it was it, it was funny to me because you know, like Mike said a lot of stuff in the last day about like, well, Mike telling him, he ain't telling. I mean, I seen a lot of it too. It I mean, three and four dealers at the hotel, like you know, you had a choice. So. Basically, a lot of the guys was doing it for free because they were testing. Yeah. So it was yeah. like your neighbor have. Yeah. You know, they kept all their money. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Initial thoughts on MJ and how did you guys build your friendship that's still lasted today? I guess, you know, like I said, when I got there and then and just when season started, just my work habit and, you know, seeing that I was dedicated, I, I didn't take nothing for granted. Um, always on point. And, you know, when you're young, they're going to test you. And knowing the plays, knowing, you know, Staying afterwards, getting your work in. So I was always about work. So when somebody seen you work, I mean, in game, then I didn't play a lot early, but when I got in, I knew how to play, rebound, outlet, set picks, you know, just I wasn't looking for them to give me nothing. I was just working. Mm -hmm. But uh, just we just got cool. Probably got more cool because we were somewhere and MJ and a guy got into it. I mean, they, it was like, a, it was real messy. So it was about a bill. So the guy told MJ, you just you a rookie, you did it that. Won't you pick the check up? MJ, nigga, you get a check too. Fuck that, you pick it up. So they <laughs> went at it and that. So it was like a lot of tension. So they uh, they almost got in the fight. And I'm like, man, I like, you know, man, y'all need to cut it out, this and that, man. You know, like, let him he get a check. You been leave before me. So it was, it was a lot of that. And, you know, they got all of them guys out of there and took two or three years, but then he got to start running the team his way, and you see what happened. MJ dropped 63 in the playoffs versus the Celtics. What was that game like? We were just talking about It that. was crazy because that was when I think he came back from surgery, and they didn't want him to play. They wanted him to restrict him. And MJ said, I'm a ball player. I'm playing. If I'm on the court, I want to play. My 35, mm -hmm. 37 minutes. So that's when Gerben didn't play that much. But uh, it was just amazing how he was just, he was fresh. I mean, you know, he, he ain't played with 20 games, but he played play 82, so. Nobody, that's crazy. And George Gervin was on the bench yeah. when MJ hit 63. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was on the bench. But he was in another world, you know. The, oh, we lost, but he was, he put a show on. Mm -hmm. he, he was popping and stopping. <laughs> <laughs> what what Larry say? What Larry say? Uh... Tonight, I think I witnessed Jesus on the basketball court. <laughs> oh, Red Bird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was tough playing against Boston because they got every call, man. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the floor is bad. Mm -hmm. They're pushing you in the back. Re rephrase that. I don't mean to cut you off. Guard in the basketball uniform. Yeah. That's what he said. In basketball shoes. Guard in basketball so shoes. So in Boston, on the court, so DJ, so he's not a guy to, to the dead spot every time. He would guide you and get the steal and go down court. Oh, because he would. Boston got about three, four dead spots. Spot. Then you had the old floor. Yeah. And DJ knew how to turn the guard. And next thing you know, because he turned him and tried to ball and come up. Mm -hmm. He took it. But uh, that's the old parquet flow, E. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and when you play in Boston in the wintertime, they got the windows open. Oh, they got it. already it's cold. Bitch. It's already about 30 degrees. They make like zero degrees. It's like, it was like they did everything they could. To, for, you know, they have advantages. And they, so you already got advantage. You got Bird, Karen McHale, oh, uh, yeah. Paris, and DJ. DJ. Like, what more? And you got Red All back looking down. Mm. <laughs> so it was crazy. But it was, you know, the fans back then, like, they not, um, they was like, you know, they, they saw good basketball. I mean, they can, you know, they can, like, I don't know what the fans, when they go to the game now, what they think about basketball as, you know, just, 
I don't think they go to watch the game. I think they go just to see who had the game and take pictures. Walk, they walk past, you know, the bench and take the pictures with players now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just, you know, the the teams that you don't see that consistency in, in what they do on a night. But, you know, one night they lose by 30, win by 20. Mm-hmm. You know, just... No consistency. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know? You can say the games came a long way because... Back then, they used to open the windows in arenas to keep the floor from sweating because yeah. of the ice. You know what I'm saying? Now mm-hmm. they ain't got to do that. But maybe, I don't know if you remember back then. Mm-hmm. That used to Call used to walk shit. in the gym. Yeah. Man, the yeah. floor freezing. Oh, about freezing in there. And the floor just slippery all over the place, I man. I always been cold. I mean, it's cold outside and they got ice on the bottom. Like, right. from the hockey. I mean, it's yeah. just crazy. Some of these arenas. But they, most of them, you know, got new ones now. So yeah. Changed up to date. A little bit. How did the nickname Oak Tree come about and what did it mean? I guess some of my play uh, just, you know, they took off, you know, oak tree, oak, you know, you know so it just, they, you know, made a half a name instead of oak tree and, you know, <laughs> they oak and... They couldn't back you down? <laughs> no. That wouldn't no, happen. Shaq can't back me down. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't, so, they couldn't uh, back you down. But uh, no, it was just, you know, I just like playing against Shaq. You know, he's a big guy. But when you're a big guy like that, one thing you don't want to do is get too close to him. You always want to keep your balance because he... You know, Shaq want to feel you and spin. Yeah, right? I, I see him do that move so many times, just spin and dunk on everybody. <laughs> I, him, I told him, he'll never dunk on me. I'm going to hit you in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that kind of leads into my next situation. Uh, you know, and this is something I did in my career when I, you know, played with stars. I mean, you know, you, you fuck with the star, you fuck with me. And that was kind of your thing with MJ. How did, you know, how was that on a nightly basis? Because he used to take a beating. Yeah. Uh, well, he didn't take a beating when I was there, really. Yeah. Um, you want you out. Yeah, Detroit. They, they went to Detroit. Wait, wait, you, was y'all, y'all was you was punks. gone. Yeah. Y'all was gone. You was gone. Y'all was gone. You said y'all yeah. was punks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's some punks. I don't care about them. <laughs> Dennis Robert, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Put, put them in the bag. I'll fight all of them. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that was, hey, but you got to reiterate that. That was Detroit started doing that after yeah, you left. Yeah, I love. I yeah. told them. They know what it was. <laughs> but uh, me and MJ, we just bonded and just, like, we started going everywhere together. On the road trip, he'd arrive with me to the airport. Most of the time, I'd arrive with him. Uh, he stayed right around the corner for me for my first two or three years. Um, go to the house, play ping pong, pool, spades. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we just, you know, we didn't do a lot out. Uh, he, sometime at nighttime, him and Richard did go racing up down Willow, Porsches. Oh, the Bears. Big uh, Richard they, uh, we hung with the Bears guys. when They won a Super Bowl 85. Yeah. Uh, but uh, besides that, we just we just had fun, you know. I wasn't cooking like I was, but my cooking started picking up, mm-hmm. you know. So, but we ate a lot of McDonald's back then. MJ ate McDonald's for every morning for breakfast. <laughs> what? Every morning he ate McDonald's. Yeah. Sound like Ocho Cinco. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> if it works. And right. Be, and before game, he eat a steak before every game. A steak? A whole steak, steak before every game. Damn, that's heavy, that's boss. Your so, second year. Uh, lead the team in rebounding and, and second in scoring um, as you continue to build your, your game and your mm-hmm. chemistry. Um, later, Doug Collins comes along as, as coach. How was that situation? Well, Doug the one traded me. Uh, Doug, Doug is a different kind of coach. Um, you know, he, he liked the wine, you know. Uh, he, he just, he was just different. I guess one time, okay, we had a game. It's on Christmas Day. Brad Sellers. So we had a meeting. So I, Okay, we in New York, so after the game, everybody go their own way. So, you know, we go in overtime and lose, get back into the locker room. Doug said, everybody on the bus, everybody back on the bus, we're going back to Chicago. I'm like, Doug, you just told everybody to go their own way. No, we on the bus going back to Chicago. So everybody get on the bus, go back to Chicago. We get the day off. The next, the next practice, no, I call a team me. Like, you fucking wrong. You shouldn't have told nobody that we can go their separate ways. You know, man up. And that's when the team started going, splitting up a little bit. Um, MJ didn't say nothing, but I like, hey, you shouldn't have said it. You wrong. Mm-hmm. So I get traded the next year. But mm-hmm. I, always, uh, I always stood up for my teammate, no matter what. I, I mean, trade me or whatever. I mean, I'm not that bad. Somebody going to pick me up. Even Toronto or whatever. I mean, you do something wrong. If the teammate wrong, I can't help you. When you're right, I, I got you 1,000, you. you know, 2,000. Mm-hmm. Because don't make a statement that you can't live up to. That's bad for the team. 87, 88, y'all get Horace Grant Scotty. How you feeling? How, how the new additions to the team was? I like the Horace Grant Scotty. We started calling them Salt and Pepper. Mm-hmm. One had a one had a being black, one had a white one. So yeah. we called them Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, yeah. They did everything together. They went to the bathroom together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so we so we got them. So it started it started being against me and Mike Brown against all the guards and two guards. So Mike Brown went to George Washington. He played with the Bulls maybe two or three years. He was six ten, about two eighty. I'm six nine, about two six or so. We used to go to the hotel room, have team. MJ get the suite. We used to go tell. I mean, we tell. We probably tore about at least thirty hotel rooms. Cause all the little guys fighting with us. So. <laughs> <laughs> like just fighting in the room, fucking around, just fighting. We be, hey, we'll sign up basketball, leave it, and we go into the next city. Yeah, <laughs> MJ. <laughs> you know, <'cause>, so, MJ. <laughs> so we start getting them in the hotel. Like let's say Warren go out, and we see him, you know, walking. We'll duck down, beat him up. You know, not too, we just beat him up. Yeah. But, uh, uh, it was just, we just had a lot of fun like that. But uh, was, Horace and Scott was good guys. Like I said, you know, they built from there. I mean, them two pieces was. You know, part of the whole um, or branding for winning them six champ. I mean, you know, three and three, especially with Horace. He only got three, and Scott got six. But I'm saying Horace was a guy who can play the four and five and mm -hmm. shoot, the, you know, mid range, good athlete from Clemson. And then, and then Scotty, you know, like I say, he's a you know like a LeBron type of player, but don't have much as offensive as LeBron. But he can do a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, he can play four position. Get everybody involved, you know. You know, so when you got a guy like that, then they had Ron Harper came along. A uh, guy can play, you know, one or two. You know, that was the thing. They had a lot of length on other players, and they had seven footers behind them. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it, it, you know, it was when I got traded. You know, they they kept building, but uh, it was fun playing with them guys. I had a lot of fun. I got a funny story real quick. Is <laughs> about Oak. We we playing in Charlotte. Oak was assistant coach in Charlotte, right? And uh, we had just lost, so. You know, I'm I come I'm cut like Oakland, so I'm from the old school. I already know. <clears throat> After you lose, ain't no laughing on the bus. You know, we was like that in Golden State. We got on the rick. So I had already, I already that's all my I played with Steve Smith and Kevin Willis and Dave Robinson. So I was taught that as a youngster. I don't give a fuck what you got going on. We lose, ain't no laughing and giggling on the bus, right? So I got DJ Augustine and D and D Brown on my team, and they young, they rookies, right? So they in the back, we just got blasted by somebody. And uh, they in the back of the bus cracking jokes. I got my headphones on, right? <laughs> so Oak here, I'm laughing. Oak like, and we ain't going to be doing all that goddamn laughing after we just lose. Y'all focus on the next game, right? He just tell you, going off on everybody. So he just turned around. And Jack, you know better. I take off my headphones and say, Oak, oh, I'm ain't even. i not even laughing. I ain't got my headphones on. Well, you know better. <laughs> just cause. Yeah, just, just cause. cause. Well, you know better. <laughs> I just had to bust out laughing, bro, because I knew he was mad at them. I didn't even say nothing. I knew what time it was. Mm -hmm. But before we even got on the bus, because DJ Augustine was one of those little motherfuckers who always laughing, dog. So I, he, and, and when it happened, nobody blamed him. Nobody, it's, it's always somebody else, dog. So it was just a, it was just a funny situation, dog. How he came in there screaming at me, dog. It was funny. You should know better, goddamn. You it. should know better. Before we get to the um, the Knicks uh, part of your career, although you were there at the beginning with Mike, thoughts on the Last Dance and 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 what you saw and what you learned because obviously not the whole time there, but you played during that. Right. Era. Um, I mean, the Last Dance was something for people at home because you know pandemic they can see. Uh, different sides of different people, but um, I think, I mean, a lot of it was like, I don't know how true some of it was, but I think that a lot of people, you know, like like Gary Payton, you know, he probably wasn't happy with Mike. What Mike said about he said a lot about a lot of people, <laughs> Scotty, uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah talk about himself. He mean, <laughs> don't know why I like Isaiah no more. I don't know what's up with Isaiah. <laughs> He's just too sneaky, you know. He, he always think he ain't. He, I ain't do it, but he did it, you know. Like, we got we, we got you on camera. You did we got it. Got you on camera. <laughs> got you on camera. You still want to be Mike? Mike do not want to be your friend, Isaiah. I'm telling you for the fifth time. He do not want to be your friend. Mm. Get up, stay on ESPN. Keep talking on TNT. Oh, uh, Mike, should, you know. Now you're trying to say everybody better than Mike. It's okay. You're not better than Mike. <laughs> he came to your city and took your city. That's why you're really mad. He took over Chicago. I know. Tough. Tough, 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 tough. <laughs> One thing I wanted to oh, ask. I love, I love it. I love it, You're dog. crying. I love it, dog. I love it, dog. <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask, uh, obviously Pip dropped a book recently, yeah. and there he was a lot too. of MJ yeah. slander in that. What were yeah. your thoughts on well, that? Well, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of last dance. It was a carryover. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, Scotty got his book. I got my book. I don't, you know, I, 
Then nobody throw me under the bridge or over the bridge. So I was just myself. I think Scotty probably feel like he was more to Mike than these guys. He should have got more action than Dennis Rodman, Steve Curry. I think Dennis got too much play and Curry. I mean, yeah. I mean, Scotty did a lot. I mean, Curry might have hit two shots in eight years. Dennis, I mean, he did his thing, rebound. But he was an asshole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, Dennis. <laughs> you know what it yeah. is. I'm the enforcer. You the claim. You the clown. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, just, no, I just try to keep it real. Dennis know what it is. Oh, no. shit. <laughs> I, I, I kind of felt like as time passes, and you know, people kind of give Scotty his props. I just, I just think he kind of going too far with it now. Like, to, to, and everybody oh, have yeah. their opinion, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But from <laughs> from one minute you saying nothing, is, nobody's better than Jordan. He's the best. To the point, I yeah. guess when after, like you said, after the uh, last dance came out, now you having second thoughts and saying all this stuff. Like I'm kind of feeling like that ain't genuine. I feel like he going through something. He mad at Mike about something. Yeah, I think I, myself. I think it's something else off the court. Right. Because Scott, he, he said, whatever he said, he got to live with. I mean, when everybody calling this guy the GOAT and you ain't in the top 25 in scoring, it's hard for you to say you're better than someone. But you got an opinion. You know, I know Scott. I talked to Scotty. Um, you know, I ain't, you know, I, I just talked to Mike after every last, you know, last day. He's mm -hmm. like, fuck it. They shouldn't have did the interview. <laughs> That's the <laughs> too. Right. But, uh, but Scotty, you know, he came out with his book. He said a lot. He did some that. He tried to compare himself with Mike. Uh, I mean, like I said, I called Mike in uh, in my book. I called Mike a LeBron for all the flake and cornflakes. Yeah. So so Scotty to Mike, Scotty ain't better than LeBron. No, not even close. So my thing is, Scotty got a lot of you know potential to, you know, type of skill level LeBron, but I don't think Scotty averaged over twenty points, but maybe one time in his career. Right. So right. I mean. I know Scotty. You know his wife. You know his son passed. I mean, he was going through a lot. So. Mm -hmm. He could have, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to, you know, I like Scotty, um, mm -hmm. but it's ain't hard, no Mike, it's hard to say you're batting the GOAT. Yeah. It's hard to say nah, that, but, nah. you know, we don't have a B on the Scotty. 88, you dealt to the Knicks, which wasn't a very popular decision uh, for Bill Cartwright. How did you find out, and, and how tough was that for you kind well, of learning the business? Well, I mean, the business business. I've always been like, hey, when you ain't in control, don't worry. When you're in control, you, gonna, you can worry. I mean, my thing is, when I got traded, it was me and Mike Richard Dent at the Tyson and Spinks fights in Atlanta City. Mm. So we you was walking to the fight. Head off. We was walking to the fight, <clears throat> and some guy hit Richard Dent, like the, the pickpockets. So like, pickpocketing. But I called him. He threw it down. And Richard was like, I said, Rich, let go your wallet. And the guy, he ducked off. So basically, he could have had it. But anyway, so we go into the fight. So somebody, somebody called Mike, and we ran really to watch the fight. The fight haven't started yet. He said, oh, shit. They traded you. I said, what? They had cell phones back then? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. They said, they traded you. I said, what? Then I'm thought, thinking like this and that. I said, did you do something about it? I'm questioning him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you the man of the team. I always said you was the man of the team, so you got to know something. Don't play dumb now. <laughs> he said, yeah, they, they said something about it, but I ain't know all the details. I said, okay, you just answer my question. They did tell you. But, uh, I mean, my thing is, I didn't I didn't cry about it. I still had a job. I'm going to New York. I'm going to play right. with Patrick Ewing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the Apple. I mean, I mean, they ain't, they ain't trading me to Sacramento nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> right. I, I was still going up here. So getting to New York, Apple was the Apple, you know. Met so many people over the years. Just, oh, man. All the rappers, all the celebrities. I mean, you really got in the mix. When oh you got man, there. <laughs> it was like heaven up there, man. I know, I know. The eighties now, I know everybody in New York. The Mecca, and there was always something going on, man. Mm -hmm. But we didn't hang out a lot on game days. Only when you off, mm -hmm. we had a rule: you, night of a game, you cannot go out. Night before, yep. Now guys go out night before, day before, during the game. <laughs> he said they go out during, during. the game. They had parties before the game. I'm like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> That was being disrespected to the team. I find, and especially the other team go out, I try to kill them. You mm. gonna, yeah, you go out in my city, you think you got an easy win? Okay. You well, felt like they was disrespecting you by going out the night before they played y'all? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, anything he did the night before a game, you try to have a shoe sign or autograph sign, yeah, that's disrespectful. We might have pissed him off then. <laughs> how, how you feel about MJ smoking cigars huh? for the game? Was he smoking cigars for the game? No, nah, he wasn't smoking cigars back then. Yeah, he wasn't. He ain't started yeah. smoking until he started winning. You yeah. know, a lot of people <laughs> changed with the win, win, so yeah. <laughs> he wasn't smoking cigars back then. He wasn't back then. Nah, so. not on no bus and all that, no. See, yeah. that's, that's the Phil Jackson era. He wasn't doing that back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your first year in New York, you guys run into the Bulls in yeah, the playoffs. Yeah. What was that like? We ran into him a lot. It was just one of them things. It was just like MJ always said you was born the wrong time. But uh, it was. I always tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell him. That's what MJ said. You always said. You know, always fucking around. So I just tell him. I'm glad. I said you glad David Stern, your next next door neighbor, right? Mm. That's why you get all the calls. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, but you guys had a hell of a team, man. Patrick yeah. Ewing, uh, Starks. Mason, Larry Johnson, Doc Rivers. Yeah. What was it like just kind of finding your footing with that team? It was a really talented team going um, into the 90s. Basically, you know, we had Pat, um, Pat, Pat Riley. Riley. Yeah, Jeff. Let me see, was it Jeff? It might have been Jeff. Pat Riley. No, Jeff. Pat Riley, then Jeff. So with Larry Johnson, we had Jeff. Um, I mean, we went to the finals in Houston, but uh, we, uh, we just balled and bounced out right against Houston. Uh, we was up 3-2, went seven. Last minute of the game, we we couldn't get the lead. Uh, I think uh, Sam Cassell hit a big three. And, but, you know, playing with the guy was great. I mean, you know, um, we didn't hang a lot in New York. Only somebody really hung a lot with me and Mason or me and Anthony Bonner. I don't think Patrick went, he ain't going nowhere. Um, Rest in peace, Anthony and, Mason. You know, I think that, uh, but we, uh, we, 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 when it's time to play, we played. That's it's like a band, you know. Everybody go the after the show over. Everybody go their own ways, and I think that hurt us as a team because we weren't close enough mm. in New York, you know. And I think that um, that hurt us a little. But we tried to, you know, like some guys, but you know, but a lot of guys. It's just, it's just like we weren't close enough. We should have been more closer, and sometimes that that work out better, but. It didn't. It just didn't work out. But uh, we fought, we fall to the end. That's why I give you that. How was Pat Riley as a coach, and what advice was, was given? Like he said, like you said, uh, Pat get ready, gets ready to fight for every game like a fighter. Uh, yeah, he was you know control freak, uh, real dominant. He like his way the highway. Great preparation, uh, but long long term for like late nut. We didn't just good in some game situation. I think that uh, that hurt us, especially against Houston and King. And he, he had skilled passer, and you know we just King was a monster. <laughs> he was what he was defensive MVP and the MVP of the league that uh, year. King, right? yeah, yeah. But Pat Riley, you know, he's. Uh, I mean, he know what he know how to get you there. He can prep, you know, get you there. And, you know, make sure your body fat is right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> make sure you know. Your, your way is right, and he can make sure you you can, you know, like fourth quarter, you got enough energy maybe to finish the game. And But, you know, we just we could just going to make the bucket when we need it. Um, that was a good series, but, you know, he was, you know, he worked us hard. We lose by 20. We know we're going to have to go do some suicide. So mm. <laughs> we'll, look, we'll play back. We'll have a back-to-back, -back and we lose. we have to work out. Sometimes most back in the day, they have the back-to-back to get the day, day off. off right? It's how you play in your back-to-back. -back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if you play bad, you practice. If you play, you know, keep it clean and five or six points, okay, I can understand. But, we, you know, so he was one of them guys. So he tried to keep you mentally tough about the game and, um, you know, didn't allow a lot of nonsense around, so I can respect that. You know? When he, I mean, he's known for, like you said, the running and, and his preparation. Right. Did he, like, was it that, like, was Patrick running with y'all? Like, everyone had to run, or was it? Well, to, for, to begin a training camp, you know, Patrick had bad knees, so late in the season, he didn't do that much running. Um, I mean, he didn't, um, he made us do what it took, to, you know, like, Sometimes you just leave practice. It ain't like some people go do something else. No, you had to go re relax and stuff. But I think he meant to do that because mm -hmm. he didn't want you out and about yeah. a lot. Tired you know, you some coaches, you rest. Yeah. So, but um, he was he was he was totally different. He was the different coach out of all the coaches I had. So I guess you know he had. But when he first came to New York, he sit down and talked to me about um, he wanted to cut my minutes and. Um, I said, okay, well, you know, you got the pedigree, you know, you won a championship in L.A., so I'm going to listen to you. I want to win a ring, so I want to see what you're talking about. So the first year, he cut my minutes from 34 down to 26, 27. We didn't do that good. 
Then the next year, he, I said, I went and talked to him. No, two years, I said, Pat, I, I need to get my regular. I, I think I bring more to the team. I know you got all your analytics, this and that, but I think my force, you don't look at the force like you should. So my force do more on the court. So the next year, I started back getting my regular minutes. I make the all-star team. We go to the finals. Mm -hmm. So Point proven. He didn't want to, but I was like, I tried your way, try my way. Right. Yeah. Man up. Right. <laughs> so, well, How good, I, I think someone that gets lost in the shuffle in the history of basketball is Patrick Ewing. How good was uh, Big Fella down there for y'all? Patrick was good, but Patrick wasn't that Georgetown Patrick Ewing to me. He, mm. didn't, he didn't bring that. When he left Georgetown, I think he left his toughness there. He mm. got to be a more finesse. And I mm -hmm. think that hurts as a team because we won't, it ain't about getting 30 points. You it's about dog. clogging that middle down when they come in and put their heads down on the floor. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, so my thing it ain't one guy can do it. No, we're trying to win as a team. If, it, if it's your turn, do it. That's what he didn't do. But besides, I mean, he got his 20 and 10, Dream Team, Hall of, Hall of Fame, all that, but we didn't get the ring. Right. Mm. You know, Carl Malone, Barkley, uh, James Harden, Westbrook. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, you get all the shots, and you get the money and the glory, but the team don't win nothing. Other than the Bulls, what other teams, you know, was tough on a nightly basis? How was, how, how was it going against the Pacers and Reggie Miller and them as well? I love to play the Pacers. Against Dale and Antonio Davis, Reggie, uh, Rick Smith, and... Some Davis Davis Davis. Davis. Yeah, Davis. I, I love to play. You know, they were more athletic than me. I just I just like to play against guys my size that want to bang, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, we had we had some wars. That was the it was more war with them than with Chicago. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, Chicago was just trying to run you and finesse and... But, the, you know, Indiana played more half-court the same way we played, so it was more mano mano. But, uh... I mean, we Reggie killed that one game. We scored like nine points in like eight seconds. And yeah. Then the, uh, another year, Patrick missed a finger roll. And but you know, this was two teams just battling to beat the Bulls. We was all in the same situation. I think they went to the final one. And we did. We had. We all had to go through the Bulls. They had to go through us. We had to go through them. Then the Bulls. The Bull was like, okay, they stand at the finish line. Like, who next? You know. So it was. It was fun though playing against them. You was on the team when. Um... Lonzo, I mean, uh, when uh, Lonzo and uh, LJ were throwing hands. Yeah, yeah, they weren't doing nothing. They, <laughs> eight, eight, nobody connected, nobody connected. No, they threw some, they threw a lot of them. They threw a lot of them. Yeah, it was funny though. <laughs> you know? So we, we briefly touched on this. 94, you guys make the finals. That's actually the year MJ wouldn't play baseball. You guys beat the Bulls in seven. A uh, tough battle against, uh, uh, go. against uh, Indiana in the okay. Eastern Conference Finals. You guys run into Houston, right? And like you said, you just couldn't get the job done. No, we just—I mean, you know—the first two games in Houston, we split. We come to New York. Uh, we win two out of the three. Uh, that's when the OJ thing was going on. And I think that so you uh, said that's when the OJ shit was happening. Yeah, the juice. That was game five, I think. Yeah, game five. Oh, because I remember they stopped the, the game chase. and announced it during yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. That's chase. right. That's and, uh, right. That's crazy. But the Houston series, I mean, you know, they just, King just, we could, we could, I mean, he was just, he was a problem. Mm. I mean, Hold on, before you start that, what, you, what was you thinking when you saw the juice on the run? Oh, man. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's innocent? <laughs> I, I was like, that was crazy. For them to break in during a game, right, like, that right. was like a, cha a championship During game. the finals. finals. Breaking news, the juice is on the run. Yeah, but Keem, Keem killed us, but Sam Cassell hit some big shots. Mm -hmm. He played big. He's, he's big shots. And it uh, seemed like every time we tried to switch over this and that, the other guy do something. It was just, you know, that was our chance, and we never got back. It's that's, that's so hard to get back, mm -hmm. you know. I think, you know, especially when you left one out there, you'd be like, oh, we got to get back. Yeah. And, then, and on the way back, it got to be perfect, you know. Basically got to add a piece, know what you did wrong, Stay healthy. You know, lucky. Stay healthy. Stay lucky, yes. Yeah, a lot of luck goes into yeah, it with the health man, and just, all the other shit. You hear about teams going back to back, like Kansas City, and I got a chance to go on three, three years in the football. I was, you know, as they struggled to begin the season, now they're back on track. It's just yeah. like, man. You got to align. It was fun, though. And the, you know, like being, I think when we had game six in Houston, you know they had the t-shirts and stuff made up already, right? So I'm in the hotel. They didn't see me. I seen them, I seen them like rolling stuff out, you know, to you know, like because they had it ready just in case we won. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's just amazing that you see that and like, wow. And I was on my way to the bus. I'm like, man, 
But you know, just now we got a chance to put it on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they probably they probably burnt it up. Then uh, y'all if y'all win game six, y'all ain't probably gonna win. Most of you don't win. It's hard to win game seven, but it was close. Went down to the last, like I said, minute. But Sam Gussell hit that three pointers on him. Big shot. Yeah. When you take a look back now, what was your, what what comes to mind when you think about your time in New York? Just how the fans treated me. They treated, mm. treated me with so much love. I mean, I mean, the people were just the restaurants, and I got a chance and you know to meet so many different people in different places and connections like crazy. Uh, I mean, if I had to do it, I'd do it the same way. Did you get big in fashion when you was in New York? That's when you started getting big in fashion, like with the suits no, and I was, stuff. I was no, we was just getting our clothes made by this lady in Chicago named Barbara Bates. Me you never shop with Kerry from North Carolina? Oh, uh, yeah, Ken. You know, he made Johnny Newman clothes. Yeah, Johnny Newman, that's right. And, uh, that's right. So basically, you know, Rochester was out a little. So I was mixing this with a little of that. So I stopped going to Rochester because you saw I seen everybody in the league with the same, you know, type of jacket. This same and that. walkers. Yeah. Then Barbara started making guys the same. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me find me another tailor. So when I got to New York, I got Mr. Ned. He's been making myself for like 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, but you know, I still, every now and then, get some of Barbara. She's cool. She started off with all the, you know, NFL guys before we got there. Then Mike used to get all the long jackets and two pieces, Nick Anders and Kendall Gill, all them guys. But, uh, yeah, she won, first started. Mm -hmm. I just always wonder who, like, who was the first to start wearing fresh suits and getting clean and come to the games, you know what I'm saying? We all, we all did that, though. Yeah, everybody oh, did yeah. that, yeah. We, we yeah. believe you got to wear, you know, suit. I mean, we going to work, so we got to wear a suit. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I always wore suits to game. I, mean, I, I probably had it every year three or four one of those suits. So I was always, I was always dressed hats, you know. Mm. You could have called me the Mac back then. The <laughs> <laughs> mob style. <laughs> 98, you was traded to Toronto for Marcus Camby. You provided a, a veteran presence for the young guys in, in um, Toronto, VC and T-Mac. How was that being with those two young stars? It was great. Uh, you know, Vince was a rookie. Trey T-Mac was there a year before. Um, it was a lot of veterans, I think, that uh, Muggsy came, Dale, Kevin Willis, you know, just Antonio. So basically, it was the track year. Keon Clark. Keon Clark, he's always come over that crown, boy. <laughs> he hey, hey, that dark. Hey, he could have been good, man. Oh, he was. He, yeah, he was dunking everything. Dunking everything, blocking everything. But now, with getting with Trace and Vince, it was just like, wow, these two young guys, and both of them are so talented. Got One, two chance. punch. Mm -hmm. You know, like DeRosa and Zach Bean. Yeah. But um, Trace, you know, left that next year. And then Vince, it was, you know, he stepped up. Um, we had team meets. And like, hey, this is your team. We go, We got your back, veterans. You know, take many shots you want. Just be ready to play every fucking night. Mm -hmm. We told him just like that, and you know, he showed up. Obviously, getting a chance to play with MJ, but Vince, from a standpoint of coming into the league and just the amount of highlights he provided. Were oh, you man. ever in like awe? Like you'd been with the goat. Yeah. But Vince. I I think, brought something different. Yeah, I think Vince highlight might be better, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> hey, you know, I Vince was a real. motherfucker when he first Vince came to leave, boy. Vince with the elevators. It was a 12. He made it 13 floors. Mm. Uh, he, he's mm. the best uh, in-game dunker we've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah. Him and, uh, yeah, Dominique for his tip dunks. The human highlight film. Yeah, but Vince, whew. I know. Man. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. When he got Lonzo, he got... <laughs> Mm, lean on it. <laughs> Open the door there and let me close it. Mm. Matumbo, but, uh, he leaned on everybody. This motherfucker. Yeah, it was them was the day. He uh, he put the show on. He had a good he had like a ten year run. Vince and he did a dunk contest and up in Canada, they you know, he left. Air and, Canada. Air Canada. Air mm -hmm. Vince. Mm -hmm. Then then uh Kawhi Leonard come win the championship. Yeah. Man. Change everything. I went to four of them games. I mean three of them games. It was like, whoa. They was off the chains up there. I know. I love Drake that. and the crew. I mm -hmm. love the T Dot. He got his own little spot in the arena. I'm like, man. They're jumping. They're doing it big. 0102, you come back to the Bulls. How was it coming back and how was it playing with Jamal Crawford and Ron Artest and all them? Come back to the Bulls. From young Toronto. boys. Yeah, young bucks. Tim Floyd, the coach. Oh, man, he was terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Should have stayed in college. Oh, man, college. I don't know. It's even high school. <laughs> uh, it was bad. But coming back to the Bulls with them young guys and, you know, Eddie Tyson, they'll get drafted. And uh, Jamal was, you know, Jamal had all the and one stuff. It was fun, but management wasn't ready for the moment. They blamed the young guys for everything went wrong. And I told them that wasn't, 
that, that ain't how you do business. You ain't bring me back here to be a, yeah, I'm not a yes man. Mm -hmm. That's what they thought. I, was. I told Jerry, like, no, he fired me. I'm like, no, you know, I'm not that type of guy. I got your back, but I'm not gonna let y'all just dog these young guys. Mm -hmm. You have two high school guys mm -hmm. and, and they don't know what to do and you, you're not trying to make them better. And you get, and your coach can't make them better because he don't know what the hell he's doing. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a little bumping for a minute and got into a 10 floor. And another story was Ty, you know, Mark Pfizer, you know him, right? Mm -hmm. So he I tried to talk. He was talented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was six, like Barkley, six five, six six, jump out of the gym. So one day we was in practice. So he, he was like messing with Eddie and Tyson. I'm like, man, leave them young guys alone. You young, you just been in the league a year before them. So how are you gonna just try to tell them what to do? If I'm not telling you, shouldn't be telling. So he started trying to next day in practice try to you know just doing this extra stuff. I'm like, man. I told you the other day. Now you do it again. I am coming to see you. <laughs> you know. <what> I mean? <laughs> so he did something again. So I had to come and see him. I said, "What did I tell you?" So I gave him like a three piece, right? Yeah. I said, "I told you." And he said, "Man, you supposed to be a leader." I said, "That's how leaders lead." I, I, I warned you twice. Yeah. Third time is me. That's how leaders lead. <laughs> <laughs> By example. <laughs> so he and then I they brought me and they find me. I like it's all good, man. But. As Tyson Eddie, I had it back. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we, we we talked about it before. Eddie said it because you know we was, Eddie was on the Warriors team, and he always spoke about how having y'all you as a vet was was big for him and uh, him and Tyson. And he said uh, if the organization would have had more patience with them, right, they would have did better. He said yeah. they had no patience with them. Two thousand two, you signed with the Wizards as a free agent. You re you reunited with Mike. How was that being back? Oh, both OGs now, yeah. both on y'all way out. We had a ball. <laughs> Seemed like we party. I mean, yeah, after, every game, that's, that's every, after every game we party. We didn't. We didn't, we stick with the rules. I mean, we didn't go out night for a game, but uh, we just you know he stayed. We stayed right on twenty second M in Washington. He's on the north side. I'm on the south side. And um, so we had you know Mike was Mike. You know just still coming in, practicing hard. You know, him and Stackhouse got a little into it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for a man, you know, be 40 years old, both of us, we still practice and, and showing that, hey, we're not here just for the ride. We're here to just, you know, make the team go win and be leaders. Mm -hmm. But we have fun, you know, we just said, ride every game together. And, you know, we just, you know, pe the people in the city, they just love because we was veterans. They seen right. the play for so many years. Mm -hmm. They were just glad, you know, we was on the team. But, um, a lot of respect in DC. Uh, when, I, when I went to school, like I was half, and so I knew a lot of people in the city. Uh, we just had fun. You were known for someone, obviously, with the book called The Last Enforcer. You were known for wanting to smoke with people. So I'm going to give you a list of names and just tell me what you remember about these people and the battles you had with them. First off, Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, great player, undersized, but on the court, I mean, you know, he didn't talk like he talked now. Mm -hmm. So I guess he got another set of license. <laughs> Since he got out of the NBA, mm -hmm. he's all right, guy. I don't, I don't want to talk too much good about him, but yeah, he's in my book. Yeah, and nothing good about him in the book. Question though, because <laughs> I, I heard, a, I don't know if it was true or rumor. I heard there was a player meeting one time, players uh, in the league, and you slapped Charles. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Could you, he said something. Could we elaborate on that, that a little was bit. A, it was a player association lockout. meeting. Yeah, it was a yeah, lockout. Yeah, lockout. Yeah, and, um, he had, in Atlanta City. It was a game. I didn't play him, but that. So something happened. An interview. And I says, next time this guy said anybody name again, Chuck, Charles, Charlie, if he said any of them names again, I'm smacking when I say <laughs> So he said Charlie here. So I ain't seen him to the lockout. They head downtown. We all the players there. Everybody yeah. in there. You know, well, let's get this shit together, man. They, you know, they keep trying to take all our money. So I said, I'm walking in. I called Mace, Derek Coleman, Chris Mill. I said, because they, they called me like, you coming? I said, yeah, I'm coming. So I come in. I'm looking around. I see Chuck. I go straight to him. I'm like, what you say? I'm just <laughs> went to have a seat and waited for the meeting. Like it wasn't even a big deal. <laughs> like you went and go grab some get some water or something. <laughs> Everybody like, what did he do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's how the ball bounce. That's how it goes sometimes, yeah. man. Uh Larry Bird. Oh man. <laughs> He's one of the best. You know, you go to the arena, he ain't shooting at 4 30, 5 o'clock. Go to shoot around, shooting at 9 o'clock. You just work on his craft. I mean, I know we beat him in the series. Uh, he was, you know, that's three out of five back in the days, but um, he tried to dunk and miss. But uh, we beat him. And I mean, 
He was a, he's a legend. That team that he played with, I mean, he just he knew how to play. Mm -hmm. All angles of the court and everything. Rick Mahorn. Just a big guy. Uh, he went to a historic black college like me, and um, I know Rick. I tell him he ain't tough as Jeff Rulin in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> X-Men. X-Men, undersized, powerful, play small, talk shit, top 10 pick. Uh, I know Xavier, um, he, was, he was a little force, but, you know, he, he did what he could do with his mm -hmm. size. Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo, Georgetown guy. Like the flex, ain't gonna fight. Um, just like all the mother Georgetown guys. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a cool guy. You know, he think he's too cool sometimes, but hey, I ain't mad at him. Be yourself. Yeah. Probably pronounce his last name, but Paul Moski. Mo Paul McKessie. McKessie. Oh, yeah, I got into him in Milwaukee. So touched him up. I had to touch him up. Did you give he, him a warning first? He, no, he broke my nose. I ain't warning you. <laughs> I had to give it to him. Oh, he hit you with an elbow in your nostril yeah, region? Yeah, man, he hit me. I, <laughs> he, he went face, I hit him in two-piece. What's the did that too one time? He was in a game in Houston over the Thorpe. So he hit me the first time, I ain't do nothing. That's a strong one. So the me. second time, he, he elbowed me. He said he tried to catch his elbow. I had to touch him up. He's strong. He was strong, too. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was strong with him. I was strong, too. I was strong with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it was fun, though, man. I liked that stuff, but it is what it is. Part of it. Part of it. Fast forward. February 8, 2017. Madison Square Garden. You were removed, arrested during the Knicks Clipper game. Um, a I lot of wait shit. To get him on the phone. I, I was blowing his phone up after that, dog. <laughs> a lot of shit went back and forth. Yeah. Tell us about that situation. Wow, it was crazy. I went there the night before for Thurman Munns, the baseball player, have a foundation award dinner. So I, I was going there like regular, and um, I was there, and this guy said, "You want to go to the game the next night?" I said, uh, "Yeah, I go." Next thing I know, he come eight guys walking up and you got to go. I said, "I got to go. I just got here." You got to go. I said, where your, I said, where your ticket? I said, how you think I get down here? So basically, he sent them guys over there and tried to, you know, aggravate me. And one thing led to another one. They started grabbing on me. I said, get your hands off of me. Don't touch me. And they took me in the back, cuffed me, and put the cuffs on me. And, you know, took me across the street to the precinct, seat. And um, got in there. They called me a piece of them and we just sit back. <laughs> so it, it got to the point where you actually went to the precinct? Yeah. I went there. And some, uh, so some guys were watching the game. So everybody was trying to get me out. So my guys from Long Island came. You know, he's a big head for one guy and one's a cop too. So they came and got me out. They let me go about 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the night. They did a couple of interviews. But this man just, he said I howled at him. Like, I'm howling at 20,000 people at the game. It's just un unbelievable. It's just amazing what happened. And, I, you know, today the commission never fined him or suspend him or nothing. And he was there, and all this a national televised game and mm -hmm. all this going out. Somebody caused this to happen. Eight guys that walk up to me for nothing. I, can even, mm -hmm. I thought I robbed the bank or something, and they'd see me, some off duty cop. There was one regular cop there, but it was just some bullshit, man. Mm. Some bullshit. <clears throat> and that's like really hurt the family and everybody who knew who I am. You right. know, somebody messed with you, you got to protect yourself. That's all I was doing, protecting myself. Mm -hmm. When did you know it was time to hang it up? 2003, the year I won the championship, you was with the Rockets. That was your last year? Hang it up? I mean, when you, my type of role, I mean, you can play as long as you want, it's just if the team wants you. Right. Because I ain't had to score points. I do, you know, a body, you know, a veteran, you know. Um, I mean, shit, basically it was just when they tell me, because I wasn't like, I got to score points to be successful in the, mm -hmm. in the game. Rebound, defense, all I had to do. So, I mean, I still could have probably played another year. I mean, I was flexible. I can still get around the court. I wasn't banged up or nothing. 18 years? 18 and a half, you're going to count that last year in Houston. Mm. What are you most proud of in B career? What I'm more proud of? Uh, all Star? I'm, I'm probably more proud of. Playing this long, all-star, getting to the finals, uh, and meeting a lot of people in my career, better my life, better, you know, uh, people you can, it's a lot of people you can call on and deal with if you need something. That's that's good to, you know, have them type of connection, you know, to play long time like that. Um, 
just just being humble and just realize that it was a job at all times. I didn't take it for granted. Mm. I'm proud to say that I got a chance to get some assists from you. We played together in the yeah. Big Three, so you, <laughs> you're still in great enough shape to play. You played in the Big Three for a season. Yeah, I've been messing around. But didn't no. he almost have to uh, give you a chicken and a biscuit too? Yeah, we we we. we <laughs> Our passion for the game clashed. I want to hear about this. I, saw, I, I was watching on TV. I'm like, damn, Jack, I got your back, but don't go at it with Oak. God damn, not Oak. Tell, yeah. tell us about that day, Jack. <laughs> what, what had happened was... I, I was arguing with the referees. One thing, Oak, and this, 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 I'm going to say this, this is what he was right about, though. When I don't argue with the referees, I was unstoppable. So I, anytime I don't get a foul, as you know, I'm arguing with the I've motherfuckers. I, they, you can't miss a call while I'm on the court. Sorry. So I come out the game. Oak, Oak take me out. You know I don't like coming out the game, <laughs> especially Oak, in the big three. And, and but he, but what he, this, the whole time we in Texas, so I'm trying to show off in front of my family. He telling me to calm down, and I'm like, he following me. Oak, he follow, he following me to the point where you ain't going back in the game. You talking to the refs. I'm gonna take myself in. No, you ain't. Yes, I am. I say, I say, oh, you forgot where you at? And this one, this one killed the whole, <laughs> killed the whole. I say, oh, we in Texas. You must have forgot where you at. He said, I'm like American Airlines. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we ended up winning the game. So for all the people who want to talk about the argument, it worked because we ended up winning the game. Then y'all had to drink at the bar later. Oh no, we, oh, yeah. we're, I don't give a fuck what happened. Me and him going to the bar, eat after every game. That's just what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, coming down the home stretch, uh, quick hitters, first thing to come to mind, let us know. If someone were to make a biopic of your life, what actor would play you? Good question. That's a good question. What actor would play me? I can let my hair grow. Maybe Leon. Leon, Leon would be nice. Yeah. He can play anybody. <laughs> nice. He can play anybody. Leon from the Power Hard he, he a fan of the show, too. Actually, it's funny you said they sent me a DM recently. He's a big fan. They just tell him he looked like me, so I pick him <laughs> just because. He can do it. Top NBA defenders of all time. Five, top five. Alvin Robinson, five. Dennis Robin, Scotty, uh, Matamo, um, me. Bo. That's Bo. That's five. That's Who's five. the first one? Who's the first one? Alvin Robinson. Alvin Robinson. Oh, okay. okay. Scotty, Dennis yep. Robin, yep. me, and Matamo. Okay. Alvin Robinson. <clears throat> um, Share a quick story with any of these people I'm about to list. Tupac, Jay-Z, Ice Cube, or Mike Tyson? Wow. I know all of them. I went to see Tyson in jail. Me and Tupac, we tossed it up. Jay-Z, um, we ain't had many run-ins. I mean, good and bad, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's the GOAT. Um, no, I just say, hey, these... The name, you just name is like, wow. Mm -hmm. They was great, and you know, you know Tupac, they saying he's the best rapper of all time. Tyson had an air nobody never had before, you know, mm -hmm. besides Ali. Most of his fight last and only last five rounds. Uh, and Jay-Z just longevity and changed the game for us. What he do off the, not on the MC, but what he doing for helping people mm -hmm. trying to reform himself. One of the best businessmen ever. And uh, he just he just just he, he used it from the streets and to get to Hollywood, Hollywood and ain't look back. Um uh, gotta give him a lot of credit for that. Yep. You said you visited uh, uh, Tupac in jail. No, Tyson. Oh, Tyson, Tyson in jail. Yeah. Okay. So Tyson, uh, you know, Don King was from um, Ohio, so he had a farm down there. And Tyson moved there for about, I guess, seven or eight years. And uh, I just see him around on the corner shooting dice in the bars at the party. You know, Tyson, <laughs> that's what he did. Mm. And um, so we went in. I, we was going to play in Indiana. And it was in the playoff. I got in early. And I had called and checked out everything. And so I took a limo up there. You know, just just went in there and they let me, you know, come in there. And we sit and talk. We had a long, long talk. They let us stay in like X hour because mm -hmm. I guess because of me, you know. But it was, it was, you know, it was sad, you know, to see him locked up like that. Um, yeah. We don't know all the, you know, criteria of what happened, but you know, um, but when they call, you know, when they put and they close that door, I mean, mm -hmm. he did something wrong, yeah, you know, but. Um, I see him all the time to this day, you know, um, we autograph signing you know, just being out and about. He, you know, he his life now is a whole different brand now. He, mm -hmm. you know. Reinvented himself. Reinvented himself <clears throat> in, in a good way. Yep. You plus four are going to the blacktop. What other players are you bringing? Plus four. No um, refs. No. Are you talking about, oh. Playing so outside. Blacktop. Blacktop. So, so this is basically like when they shot the Space Jam, when MJ had the bubble. So basically, 
it was like the team we had was no like you know most no score but guys who get up and play defense. Mm -hmm. We won because we had a good defense team. We made the buckets. We got a good defense team that we stopped another team. So we you know we had a chance to win. But uh, who I'm gonna take on the court with me? I'm definitely gonna take Black. Um, and we got to play on the blank top. Um, myself, LeBron. Um, I'm gonna take Shaq. I need some diesel. I need another shooter. I'm probably take Kobe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say Black, Kobe, LeBron, and Shaq. Yeah, <laughs> and me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Y'all ain't, ain't losing. I know. What kind of music did you used to listen to before the games? Um, I wasn't no music type. I liked the, I liked the all of it. I ain't had no special type, but I love like Luther, OJ's, Temp, Teddy, all that. Um, so kind of some relaxing shit before you play. Well, no, I'm saying no. I listen oh. to up tempo. I mean, I can music don't make me go up or down. Okay. You know, some people need to get high. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I just like it what's up with playing. But uh, you know, Bone Thug from Cleveland. You know, mm -hmm. them my boys. Give them a shout out. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I, I didn't have no really, really, because in New York, it was so much music back then. You right. know, you Chuck D, Run the MC, you got LL, you got, J, you know, you got, uh, Biggie. Uh, what's the name? Biggie. You got, um, Wu Tang I mean, came um, a little bit after that. Huh? Wu Tang a little bit after that. A little Wu Tang, and then you got, um, what's my man's name? You know, Rakim and, um, Eric B and Rakim. 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 So I got a story about that. I was in Chicago. In uh, my second year, I was going to think, I think it's 97, Paid in Full came out, right? Mm. So I'm in, I'm gonna got a Beamer, you know, I got the Gold fur BBSs. on the seats. Mm. I got a, a BMW Gold in, in the middle of, you know. So I'm riding down there, finna go in the back. So the light, is, it, it's on yellow, but you know, it ain't turn red. So I'm gonna turn, police, stop the fucking car, stop the fucking car. Like, what's going on? I'm just going to stop the fucking car. I said, man, you don't have to get all like that. And he just kept cussing me out. I got, I said, man, I'm not going to take but so much, really. So then another couple, oh, man, that's oh, He just with the bull. You know, just shit just be happening. I'm like, man, you know, just I almost blew up. It could have been another kid. <laughs> it could have been almost, bad. I'm telling you, I was gone. Mm. Because they were just all extra. But um, so... I went to see the show. That was, I think, his first album. It was, you know, a nice little show in Chicago. But I, I like like Rock Kim. He just, well, he just delivered. You know, I was just in New York last weekend. They had an old school show. Carries one, Slick Rick, um, Kane was there. Nice and smooth. Kid and play. It was a mystical. It was a nice little show. I was surprised that you know, but it was a good show. If you could have one guest on this show. Who would it be? But before you answer, you have to help us get your answer. He on might this be show. the only person that could be able to get the person we and, really, yeah, really and, want. Yeah, I just hope you say his name. Wow, is he a rapper? No, oh. you know who? Black. Yes. Mm. Oh, okay. You might be the only person that could really get him to us too. I mean, I'm still in the family with the shoe deal, but I can't get him on the. He might. He might break down. He, he did the forward in my book, see? Right, yeah. Hey, no you know what? But you know what? But, but this is what I said to Ogre. Hey, right. And, you and, know, he, he, no, you got to give this one. You know what? You got to give your teammate one here and there. Right. You know, it might be every 10 years, might be every 20. You got to do that one every now and then. But I'm going to say this about, about MJ. I haven't, obviously, but when I see him, it's like he ain't, like he seen me yesterday. Every time I see him, it's like he seen me yesterday. You know what you know, to say. He got a lot of love for me. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You know what he got a say. lot of love for me. But uh, yeah, man. All right, I'll put that in. I'm going to get my wife, Angela, because she watches the show all the time. And Abe and Arlie, they be like, they was like, Dad, when you going to be on the show? Yeah, so, yeah. It's been over a year. They've been That's telling That's my family, too. We tried to set it up a couple of times. You know, it didn't Atlanta, work in New York, yeah. but... Uh, yeah. They, Perfect they want, timing. They, when they want the real smoke, they going to call. <laughs> yeah, <you got laughs> Perfect it, so. timing. Thank you for coming, OG. You know, I got a lot of love for you. Thank Big you. brother to me, Thank Big OG. Give Thank them a little info about the book one more time, man. The book the is out now. Person. You got to get it. I mean, you can't. You will not stop laughing. Don't do not drink wine. Do not drink wine and read this book. Because you have to change clothes a couple of times. <laughs> I'm honored to be in here. I'm in this book. Honored, honored to be in this book. There's a lot of names. I'm telling. It will be a sequel to it because. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh, it's just part one. Oh man. Hey, this is this is this is going ten times platinum. Next one going twenty. Mm -mm. Going so, diamond. We yeah. thank we thank you for giving us the book. OG, Man. you know I'm finna bust it down on my flights. Yeah, I ain't gonna be. I'm telling you, got a gift for you too, though. Okay. 
You know we got a new merch out. Oh, no doubt. So I'm going to I'm I'm rock it. Yeah, I already Appreciate know. You, you know? got to make sure you get I some put, apparel, I put, man. I forgot to bring this in for stuff, but it's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I'm going to you, you, make sure I get y'all some. You send me all my stuff, so <laughs> I, I know I'm going to get it from the grills to the T-shirts. I got all that thanks, stuff. Thanks for the bag. Yes, yep. sir. All the smoke dot store. Go get okay, it. Okay, y'all coming with it. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> man, I'm going to cut my hair next week. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to post it. It's a snapback, so you good. Well, Oak, man, we appreciate your time. Congratulations man, thanks, on the book. And yeah, shit, more books to come. Continue hope to. Hope I can come back soon. Hope we can talk about these, uh, these people out here. Yes, sir. I don't mind talking yes, about sir. it. <laughs> That's a wrap. All the smoke. Special guest, Charles Oakley. Make sure you go get his book right now. You can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. comes to Michael Prince Capital. What you've done before today is not my concern. That's the way of the gun. And you're okay with it. The gun doesn't care what I'm okay with. The billionaire class, they're a scourge. I'm gonna get them where they live. I come to take what is mine. He won't stop till he gets what he wants. I can't lower my rifle. I don't go to war that way. I just go to war.